Hello, welcome to Children's Church. Thank you so much for coming and spending this time with me and spending this time with God so that we can get to read God's word and get to know God a little bit better. Today, we're starting a new series on the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit. And today we're learning that one of the fruits of the spirit is love. Love is one of the fruits of the spirit. I have this um, tree that has grown here in my office and on it, we're going to look over the next several weeks at what kind of things come out of our lives when we trust in Jesus and when Jesus lives in us, what comes out of us, right? And love is what we're going to be talking about today. So when we think of love, Often we think of hearts, which is why I put a strawberry over there. I know strawberries don't grow on trees. I just, um, I liked it because it's kind of the shape of a heart. Not all, the, not all strawberries, but some. So we usually think of hearts. And so um, what I'm going to have you do is, if it's okay with the grown up in your um, house right now, is if you want to grab a washable marker, Actually, let me tell you what we're going to need for today's lesson. You're going to need some markers. You're going to need some paper. You're going to need a pair of scissors and a cup. Mine is a mug, but you'll probably want like a plastic cup or something. Um, okay. So feel free to pause the video and grab those items if you want to. All right, so if it's all right with the grown up who's in charge right now, where you are, I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to draw a heart on my hand with a washable marker. This is not something you would want to do all the time, but for our lesson today, we're going to draw a heart on our hand. If your grown up does not want you to do that, you can draw a heart on a piece of paper and put it in your pocket, right? So you can draw a heart on a piece of paper and put it in your pocket or um, bobby pin it, not bobby pin, safety pin it to your shirt um, or whatever you want. But I drew a heart on my hand to remind me of love. And we're gonna look at a story that Jesus told about love. Jesus used a lot of stories because how many of you like hearing stories? I like hearing stories. And so he told this story because there were religious leaders around when Jesus was there with living and walking on the earth. And they were kind of mad and grumpy that Jesus was spending time with people who did the wrong things. Like these were people who were known for doing a lot of bad things. And Jesus was spending a lot of time with them. And the religious leaders were like, you should not be spending time with them. You should not love them. They're, they're misbehaving. You shouldn't love them when they misbehave. So Jesus told a story to talk about God's love for people, all people, when we misbehave, right? How many of you guys have ever misbehaved or done something you weren't supposed to do? Yeah. So we're going to act out the story that Jesus told. So um, if there's another person in the room with you, ask if they could be the father of the story. Now, it doesn't have to be your father. It could be your mom, your aunt, your grandma, your grandpa, your brother, your sister, whoever. But someone's going to play the part of the father, and then you are going to play the part of the prodigal son. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. The person playing the father is going to hold on to a marker or, or more than one marker a pair of scissors and some paper. Okay. So whoever's playing the father is going to hold on to those things for the start. Um, and here's, um, let me read the story for you. It is found in Luke chapter 15. 
So you can go read this story in your Bible um, at any point too. So Luke chapter 15, I'm going to read um, verses 11 and 12. Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons and the younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now instead of waiting until you die. On a side note, if my kid came and said that to me, I would not be very happy. And I would not be as kind as this father was probably. So he says, so his father agreed and divided his wealth between his sons. Okay, so go to the person who is um, playing the father part and ask them for money and they will give you the paper markers and scissors and here's what you're going to do with it you're going to cut them into strips like this and you're going to use a marker to draw a money symbol on your paper okay so you can pause the video and go cut your strips of paper and make your little dollar bills. Okay. All right. Okay. Do you have your money? Oh, I didn't do dollar bills. I didn't do, uh, let me add more. Ooh, that's a hard one. Okay. So if you have your money, now let's read what he did with the money in verse 13. A few days later, this younger son packed all of his belongings and took a trip to a distant land. And there he wasted all of that money on wild living. So he took a trip to a far away place. So I want you to take the money that you have. I want you to go far away from like go the other side of the room for the person who is playing the father. And I want you to take some of your uh, bills and I want you to draw or write what you would spend money on. If you got a lot of money, what would you spend it on? Like I drew a picture of some clothes and shoes. I would buy better looking shoes than that and, and probably better looking clothes, but you know. Um, I would go on a vacation I'd spend the money on a vacation and probably more cats. So you write or draw what you would spend the money on. Okay. So you can pause the video and do that. Okay. Once you have all of your money and you have all the things you would spend it on, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take it, and I want you to rip it up into pieces. Oop. He spent all that money on wild living, it says. And that wild living was things that are not good choices. The son made some bad, bad choices in how to live his life. And so sometimes we make bad choices and we misbehave and we don't do what our mom or dad tells us to do, or we tell a lie and we don't tell the, we don't tell the truth, or we take something that doesn't belong to us. And that, all of that, he was pulling him away from his father. Have you ever, I want you to think of something that you've done that was not so good. You don't have to say it out loud. I just want you to think about it. How did you, how did you feel when that happened, when you did that? I feel pretty sad and miserable when I have done things I know was not what God wanted me to. Well, now the son was out of money and he needed a job. Let's read what happened in verses 14 and 15 and 16. About the time the money ran out, a great famine swept over the land 
and the sun began to starve. Oh, hold your stomach. Oh, you're so hungry. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him to feed his pigs. And the boy became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. Well, I want you to scatter your torn up money on the ground a little bit. And I want you to pretend that that is the, um, the scraps that the, the pigs were eating and the dirtiness of the pigs that you had to clean up after. And I want you to spend some time now, now that you've scattered it on the floor, spend some time cleaning it up. And then if you have a recycling box or bin, I want you to go put it in recycling, okay? So you can pause the video and do that. All right. How did it feel to have to clean up that mess? Sometimes cleaning can be fun, but for this uh, boy who had run away from home and was now had nothing, cleaning up after the pigs and feeding them when he didn't have anything to eat was torture. And the boy had an idea. Let's see what he decided to do. What do you think he should do? Well, let's read and see if that's what happens. Verse 17, when he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired men have enough food to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, father, I've sinned against both heaven and you. And I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired hand. He didn't even feel like his father would love him anymore and he could be his son. So what I want you to do is I want you to take three or four baby steps towards the person who is playing the father in this story. They're at your house, okay? And with every baby step, I want you to say, I'm sorry. Okay, ready? Go. What do you think the father did in the story? Let's read verse 20 and see. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long distance away, his father saw him coming and filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him and kissed him. Now, for the person playing the father, I want you to run over to your son and give him a great big hug if you feel comfortable doing that or high five if that's more comfortable for you. Yay! Now here's what happened in verses 21 through 24. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening in the pen. We must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. And so the party began. Yay! So jump up and down and celebrate. Yay! Woohoo! It's awesome. He, the father was so happy. Actually, I have a picture of this story right behind me. That's the father and the son who ran away. And this is the older brother we're going to talk about in a minute. I know they don't look like they're celebrating a whole lot, but the father is welcoming the son back home. And they were so excited. He said they have to have a, a party to celebrate. But the older son, he didn't really want to celebrate because he told his Dad, he's like, look, I didn't run away from home and I stayed here, but like you didn't throw me a party. And his dad said, oh, you can have a party whenever you want. I love you and you like everything I have is yours. I have a question for you. Was there ever a time as we read and played out the story 
that you did not have your heart with you, the one you drew or have in your pocket, how does that remind you of God's love? God's love is always with us. No matter how far away we might run, no matter how badly we might behave, no matter how many wrong things we do or how far away we try to run away from God, God's love is always with us. He has so much love for us. And when we get filled with God's love, it comes out of us. Like on this tree, the strawberry bush tree is coming out. When we are filled with God's love, it comes out of us so that we can love other people. If you have a sink nearby, here's what I want you to do. The person who is playing the father, I want them to be in charge of turning the faucet on and off. And I want you who are playing the part of the sun to hold a cup under the faucet. And if you have one more cup, put that cup underneath the cup you're holding. So this cup, the second cup can sit like in the bottom of the sink and you hold another cup. And then the person playing the father is going to turn the faucet on and off. We're going to pretend that the faucet is like God and God's love is coming out of it. When the water comes on, we are like the cup. And God's love is going to fill up that cup. And when it overflows, it's going to pour into the cup right below it. I want you to go to the sink and think about all the things that God has done to show his love for you. And while you think about and say the things that God has done to show love to you, I want the person playing the father to turn the faucet on and let the water come through and fill up the cup and overflow into the cup underneath it okay so you can pause the video and go do that at your sink right now all right i hope that was a fun visual for you to see how much god's love for us his care for us the fact that he gives us food and clothes and people who love us and things to read and learn about and friends to play with and toys to play with and all kinds of amazing things that all of that fills us up and then we can show that love to people around us. Let's thank God for being so loving and that his love is always with us and that we can show that love to other people too. All right, ready? Open and close, open and close. Give your hands a clap. Open and close, open and close, fold them in your lap. Dear God, thank you that no matter what we do, even and especially when we disobey and misbehave, you still love us. Thank you for that amazing love and for your forgiveness when we do the wrong thing. Please fill us with your love so we can show that love to other people too. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's children said, amen. All right, I love you. Thank you for spending this time together with me and with God. I love this time with you and I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you next time. Bye.